Moral relativism has become the backbone of our society. What is the true definition of tolerance? The myth of moral neutrality. Morality deals with principles of right. Hope is believing in God's promises. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. Welcome back to our discussion and sessions on Christian apologetics. Before we begin, I would like to briefly define the term apologetics. What do I mean when I say the word apologetics? Christian apologetics is concerned with methods, strategies, and arguments that deal with defending the Christian faith and proclaiming the truthfulness of the Christian faith to others. So when we say apologetics, we mean defending the faith and proclaiming the truthfulness of this faith unto others. Apologetics is not a new discipline to the church. Since the first century, the uh, times of the disciples, the apostles, early church fathers dealt with the field and the discipline of apologetics. Saint Paul in Acts 17, um, an example of apologetics defending the faith. St. Irenaeus in his Against Heresies work, a great example of defending the Christian faith. The answers to defend the faith have always been the same. The answers have always been the same. The questions, however, have taken a different form. We must learn in order to defend the faith and to proclaim the truthfulness of the faith to deliver our answers with a, with a package that is relevant to today's world. A package that's relevant to today's world. We might think that this is all new, but that is not the case. The Bible tells us that there's nothing new under the sun. Malcolm Muggeridge, a British author who converted to Christianity, said, All new news is old news happening to new people. All new news is old news happening to new people. As I mentioned, apologetics is not foreign to the church and the early church fathers more specifically. So the purpose of this study is threefold. First, to understand the culture, to influence it. We must understand the culture we're living in. Second, to refute false objections to the faith, or more specifically, false objections to the Christian faith. And thirdly, to relevantly share the message of Christ with others. So first, understanding the times, defending the faith against objections, and to share the message in a relevant way with others. The course of this study is arranged with linear thinking in mind. The topics will build upon one another. They are divided into three, three main categories, understanding the times, Christian defense, cults, and movements. Understanding the times, Christian defense, cults, and movements. First, understanding the times. What are we going to study together? We're going to study postmodernism, the spirit of this age, the philosophy of this day and age. Secular humanism, which proclaims that man is the measure of all things. These philosophies have infiltrated our society and the fabric of our culture in the West. Pluralism, more specifically religious pluralism, which advocates that all religious systems lead to the same God. Absolute truth, does it exist? Is truth relative? Is it absolute? Is it knowable? Moral relativism, is morality a relative uh, phenomena or is it an absolute phenomena? Worldviews in general, how one views the world. How can we test the various, the contradicting, the differing worldviews that surround us? And what makes one worldview valid over another? So all these topics fall under the overarching topic, understanding the times. For us to be able to, as Christians, influence the culture, we must first understand the culture we're living in. So postmodernism, humanism, pluralism, relativism, a lot of isms that we are going to share and discuss 
that will help us understand the times we're living in. Second category will be Christian defense or defending the core Christian faith. For example, does God exist? Can we prove that God logically exists? The problem of evil, how do we answer as Christians to this question? How do I explain the existence of evil in light of God's existence? The validity of the scriptures, is it divinely inspired or is it a man-made book that was collected thousands of years ago that has no validity or authenticity? Can we prove that the scriptures um, is a divine work? The factuality of the resurrection can we defend the fact that the resurrection is an event that took place in history? Or is it a myth, as some people uh, falsely uh, proclaim, that it's, it's a myth, it hasn't actually happened in, in history? Science and religion, is there a contradiction between science and faith? The case for Christianity in general, what makes, what sets Christianity apart from other religions? Why? would I be compelled to follow this faith then, rather than following any other faith for that matter? What is the case for the Christian faith? And finally, how to relevantly share this faith with others. So these are, I would call, the core Christian doctrines that we must as Christians be able to, must be equipped to be able to answer these, these questions. Third section will deal with cults and movements. The New Age movement, how it has plagued our society. What is the New Age movement? What does it talk about? Who are the followers and the advocates of the New Age movement? The Word of Faith movement, people like um, Joel Osteen, people like Joyce Meyer, people that have um, gained tremendous popularity in the um, Word of Faith movement, what do they preach, what do they stand for, what is their theology? Mormonism, Jehovah's Witnesses, Buddhism, Hinduism, and in general overview of world religions. What do they say, what is their doctrine and their theology? So in short, we're talking, we're going to deal with understanding the times, how to defend the core Christian faith and doctrines, and then we're going to expose these cults and movements that have infiltrated our society. So what are the characteristics of today's culture? What are the characteristics of today's culture? For the past 20 years, we have been experiencing the birth of a new era, a new age. Some historians and scholars call this a new shift in paradigm values and worldviews, a new shift in paradigm, a way of life in general. This age has is, come to, uh, is known now as the post-Christian and post-modern age. We call this, uh, or, or, or um, uh, scholars call this the post-modern age that we are currently living in. Christianity in this age has become nothing more than a troublesome ideology amidst diversity. A troublesome ideology amidst diversity, and that's how the world around us views Christianity. J.P. Morland, in his book Love Your God with All Your Mind, says, A major cause of our current crisis consists of a worldview shift from a Christian understanding of reality to a post Christian, post modern one. And that's the age of, as I mentioned, post modernism. This world and this age is characterized by, first, the rejection of moral absolutes. Moral absolutes do no, no longer exist. Morality now is relative to the individual or to the circumstances or the situation. This world of postmodernism is also characterized by skepticism. We don't know, we may not know, and we're not sure that truth really exists also characterized by religious pluralism, which basically means that all religions are good and all religions point to the same God. So let's talk about these three characteristics of this age briefly. First, the rejection 
of moral absolutes. When it comes to morality, we do whatever we feel it's, is right, or whatever works, or whatever everyone else is doing. There is no absolute point of reference to which we say, this is the way we ought to do, or this is the way we ought to behave, rather. When it comes to morality, whatever feels good, or whatever, whatever works. Um, cultural anthropologist Gene Veith points out that in his book, it is hard to proclaim the forgiveness of sins to people who believe that since morality is relative, they have no sins to forgive. If morality is relative to me, to my personal experiences, then what sins are you talking about that I need to be forgiven? And we will talk in depth uh, further about moral absolutes and moral relativism. The second characteristic is the skepticism of our society. We live in a world that has become increasingly skeptical. Skeptical about whether you and I can know anything as objectively true, especially religious truths. And this skepticism is very prevalent in the academic world. Um, part of understanding the times in which we live is to realize that people generally will not take what we say at face value as being true. People will be skeptic towards what we say. We don't know, we're not sure who's to say, who's to judge. The third characteristic of, the, of, this, of this world we live in is religious pluralism, which basically advocates that all religions are essentially equal and they all teach equally valid truths, equally valid truths. You see how dangerous that could be. Sounds good, it sounds like it promotes tolerance, but it has underlying logical fallacies, problems that we may not be aware of, that we will expose in the upcoming sessions. So to claim that you have discovered the absolute truth is no longer the ideal, it is actually the problem. You are not encouraged to proclaim that you have the truth and uh, to preach that truth unto others.